It's no surprise that technology has transformed the way that modern crimes are solved. From our unofficial tracking devices, our phones, to AI, to cameras, there's lots of innovation that detectives can tap into and are. About 85 to 90% of crimes are solved with the help of modern technology. Here's a breakdown of how local law enforcement is using technology based on an interview with a senior detective from the Northeast. You're watching iHeart STEM. Today, we'll tackle one STEM topic I learned from experts. Just four key questions with each answer under one minute or less. Did you guess it? Cameras are the most important piece of technology used to solve crimes. While obvious, they give a first-hand account of what happened or what couldn't have happened. Our brains are faulty, and when we remember something, we actually influence the memory by the mood we're in now. So cameras help police connect the dots or sometimes even the victims, helping them recall what color someone was wearing or where they're positioned. There's different types of cameras, those that are installed by government localities, private companies, and individuals. Government cameras like plate reading cameras are particularly helpful because of, yes, identifying the license plate number, but also things like the car, color, the make, the model. And then private and individual cameras are helpful because they give evidence outside of the public domain. Now, access to these cameras has to come through consent, subpoena, or a warrant. Now, an easy example of how different cameras are used is a home invasion case. They used plate reading cameras and neighborhood cameras to connect the dots for the car, but then they got the license plate number and accessed the technology within the rental car to put them at the scene of the crime. Our phones have become our lifeline. The average person in the U.S. spends over four hours and checks their phone over 125 times daily. We do everything on them. We communicate, we plan, we organize. Our phones know so much about us, but most importantly, our phones have a unique identifier. So every time we connect to a cell phone tower or Wi-Fi, it knows that we were there. Two examples the detective gave me of how they've used this type of data to solve crimes. One involved a missing person where they were able to take their cell phone number, contact Verizon, get the Verizon geofence information, identify there within a quarter of a mile of a cell phone tower. Then because they used Google, they got the Google information identified there within six meters of a pin and they were able to find the person. Another was a drug case turned murder case because the person overdosed. Now the person who overdosed and the drug dealer communicated over text and WhatsApp using a false name in WhatsApp. But because they're able to study the phrases of how they talked in text, they were able to identify the person in WhatsApp and connect the drug dealer to the case. Several areas of technology have changed what and how police can use evidence. DNA technology has seen a lot of advancements, specifically around how much DNA you need. You used to need like a vial of blood in order to generate a DNA match, but now you can have evidence as small as a Tic Tac or a strand of hair, and the technology is able to use that DNA to generate more DNA, which is then used to match the DNA. So as a result, as soon as a major crime scene is locked down, it's vacuum for any small piece of evidence. AI is being used like in a lot of different industries to sort through data, like in the case of BreakCam. This is a technology where you input a parameter like a car color, and rather than somebody having to sit there and go through all of the video footage, the technology does it for them. Facial recognition is another technology that continues to see advancements. Now, while it's being used for years, it still doesn't have a super high success rate, so they continue to improve it. You'll take something like a video or a still image, and then you use database information to match it to a face. Tim Cook once said, technology is neither inherently good nor inherently bad. It is what we make of it. It's natural for law enforcement to want to use as much data as possible to solve cases, but some people believe they've started to cross the line. Helper devices like Google and Amazon are paid to listen. So when you say, hey, Google, it responds. But as a result, when it comes to crimes, they could be listening into details or relevant conversations for a case. In fact, Amazon Echo has been obtained in several murder cases to try to solve the case, but many people believe this is a violation of personal privacy. Body cams are required in several states to record what happens when a police handles a scene. But as a result, some people believe that this is a violation of rights for bystanders and victims. New York has the largest police force because it's the most dense city. So as a result of needing to solve crimes quickly and sort through a lot of data, they partnered with Microsoft to develop a system called DAS that was actually started as a counterterrorism system. As a result, though, it's come under some scrutiny because some people believe that they're collecting too much information without people knowing. Well, that's a little bit about crime technology. If you want to take your knowledge a level deeper and get into some of the nuances and really learn about some of the technology, I encourage you to search on YouTube because there are a couple very interesting news stories on technology 
albeit a couple years old. I'll see you next week.